Hello and welcome to another Sprues and Brews unboxing video. My name's Dave and I'm bringing to you today Warhammer Underworld's Wintermore. This is the latest season starter box for Warhammer Underworld. Yes, it's been six months since Death Gorge came out, so it's time for a new starter box. Now, I still don't agree with these things coming out every six months. I prefer them to be a yearly thing. Um, however, you know, Games Workshop seem to be really into this cyclone underworld at the moment and so yeah i'm just going to get used to it so um we're still technically in the death gorge i think we're just in a different section and um, but this is a brand new starter box so in here will be everything you need to start playing underworld say you've never played it before you've got the boards you've got the cards we've got two brand new warbands which you can see right here if i just get up to focus um so they're the two lead characters from the two warbands um, they're called the Skinnerkin, who are your yeah, um, Flesh Eater Courts, and the Brethren of the Bolt, which are like a new take on flag flagellant flagellants, is that how you pronounce them? From the old City of Sigmar. Um, so yeah, uh, what else have we got in here? Let's have a look at the content. So we've got five Skinnerkin fighters, five Brethren of the Bolt fighters, 10 double-sided fighter cards, 32 card Brethren of the Bolt rivals deck, 32 card, the Skinnerkin uh, Rivals deck. Uh, we've got a 32 card, Right Worm Bite, Bite Rivals deck. My pronunciation is terrible. Uh, which is a Rivals deck that can be used by any Warband. As is the 32 card, Hungering Parasite Rivals deck. We've got tokens, we've got the rule book, we've got the game boards, and we've got Wintermore dice. So it's a hefty box, as they always are, these Underworlds ones. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open. We're going to check out the sprues of both Warbands. And we're also going to check out all the cards from uh, each of the four decks that are included. So without further ado, let's get this box open and get this unboxing started. Okay, so we've unsealed the box. Let's lift the lid. This is literally the first time I'm seeing this as we're unboxing it. We've got the instruction manual, uh, or the rule book even. Um, Quite a bit thicker than the last time I did one of these um, unboxing of, of like the Underworld starter boxes. It's been a while. I remember when they used to be quite um, small. But anyway, we'll take a better look at that in a moment. We've got the assembly instructions. As with all Underworld's models, they're all push fit. So you've got the Flesh Eater Courts there. And you've got the Brethren of the Bolt on the back. So they look fairly straightforward to go together. We then have a white envelope. This is probably gonna contain, yep, it's a board pack, so we'll get that open in a moment. But let's check out these sprues. So the Brethren of the Bolt come on this gray plastic. Let's just get that to focus. And there's some really detailed binnies. What I always like about Underworlds is the really nice sculpted bases. Let's check those out. They're really nice. Now, this particular warband probably isn't to my taste visually. It'd be interesting to see the Rivals deck, see if that kind of changes my mind. I know when um, I did the Gravebreakers review just a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't majorly struck by the models. They've grown on me, um, but the Rivals deck really got me liking that warband. So we'll see what the deck is like for these guys. Maybe you know I'll have the same, um, the same thing will happen and I'll get drawn to the to the warband because of how good the cards are. Um, so that is the Brethren of the Bolt. Hopefully I've shown you enough detail there. And then we've got on this dark green sprue, the Flesh Eater Quartz. So a little bit more spindly. Again, we've got the sculpted bases here. And they're all nicely packed on these um, two sprues. Again, if you're new to Underworlds, which you might be coming into Wintermore, um, you'll always find that warbands come on different colored plastic. The idea behind this is, <clears throat> say you don't want to paint them, maybe you're not a big fan of painting, if you and your friend played, you've, you've got clearly distinguishable warbands, thanks to the different colored sprues. So that is why they do that. Next, we've got another package. This will contain all our cards. Um, I know this because the rivals um, of the Mirror City 
review that I did a few weeks ago also had the cards in like a package like that. So we'll have a look at that in a close detail in a moment. And then we've got the dice. And I really like that blue. It really goes nicely with the gray and, gray and purple. Um, so these are your attack, defense and magic dice, which you'll see in the rule book, um, all the rules on how they work. But, but yeah, so the blue dice are your attack dice, your purple dice are your magic dice and your gray dice are your defense dice. So that is everything from the box. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look through the rulebook first and then we'll check out all the cards. So let's cut to the uh, rulebook. Now, before we flick through this, it's going to be interesting because it's been a while since I've done an Underworld starter box. And I always used to find that they weren't great explaining some of the, like the, the keywords and such from some of the cards and, you know, the later cards. Um, I mean, I played Underworld at, at the most early doors like the first few um, seasons of it and um, I've not been sort of playing it as much more recently although I'm really desperate to get back into it so I'm hoping this rule book goes into um, an awful lot of detail when it comes to keywords but we'll see let's let's go through this together um, and see what we find so the contents here we've got a bit of background on the Wintermore which goes into more detail here Birth of Frost. The Death Gorge lies at the heart of the Icebound Bial. Uh, sorry, my pronunciation, whatever that says, um, is, is shocking. Secrets of the Old Ice. The Hungering Parasite. And we've got some background on both of the war bands that are included with some really nice artwork. And then we've got an introduction. So this explains what all your different cards and your tokens are within the box. So you've got like your objective tokens here, glory points, wound counters, um, your boards, um, and then obviously different decks. Um, and we'll go into um, rules in regards to the war bands that come in the box. So these are your models. So you've got the Brethren of the Bolt. And the skin again, it's got the both equal number of models per side. It explains all your different points on your character cards, what everything does. Talks about advanced rules and traits, which is good. And you've got your decks, understanding which cards are for which deck. It then breaks down your objective cards, gambit cards, and upgrade cards. So that's cool. So already we're going into much more detail than I remember from any of the starter boxes that I've reviewed and unboxed previously, which is um, which is really good. Um, talks about keywords here, but it doesn't go into detail just yet about what, what each of them are. Talks about the abilities, the battlefield, what's classes of starting hex or blocked hex, incomplete hexes. Again, going into a lot more detail than I remember from previous starter editions. If maybe I could be wrong with Death Gorge, but um, I, I didn't unbox that one. I kind of skipped that one. Um, but yeah, looking good so far. Playing the game, so we've got the game sequence, breaking it down nice and easy for anybody new to the game or coming back to the game in my uh, uh, in um, in my example. Explaining all the different markings on your dice. So again, you've got your Blue dice, your attack dice, your defense dice, and your magic dice. Talking about re-rolls and roll-offs. Feature tokens. Yeah, so going into as much detail as possible. Steps of the turn. Again, giving it a nice, nice straightforward breakdown of what you do in a turn. You and your opponent. Activating and moving your fighters. Counters and pushes and stuff. The attack sequence, combat sequence. Lots of detail on uh, on how the game plays. This is so much better. I know I've said it quite a few times. This is so much better than the, uh, the old starter box, uh, in my opinion. Especially these sort of advanced rule box outs. Talk about some of the abilities that are on some of your cards. How you cast spells and gambit spells. The 
power step, playing all your gambit cards. Playing upgrade cards. Scatter, that comes into play with some of your spells and some weapons as well. Playing reactions. A page there. Advanced rules. Knowing when to react. Playing out your end phase, scoring your glory, and then playing on to the end of the game. So, <clears throat> since the beginning of Underworlds, there's a few different ways you can play now. Your rivals and nemesis. Um, so you've got your sort of rivals decks, which are like you just pick up and play. Uh, Nemesis is more about deck building. You got your relic decks. Talks about the championships that go on. And then it also talks about multiplayer games as well because although um, it's primarily a two-player game, you can play three or four players as well, which can be a lot of fun. I remember having some really good multiplayer games. I'm hoping to sort the rest of the Sprues and Brews guys into playing some more uh, Underworlds. Supporting fighters. All right, here we go. So hopefully this is going to have quite a few of our keywords in. So it's a quick glossary. Um, yeah, we've got we've got some keywords here. So it looks like it's most of most of it's um, explained, which is good. I'm just trying to think of what some of the. Um, the more recent ones that I've seen to see if they're in here. It looks like they are. So a nice glossary of terms to explain what everything means, uh, which is really good. Yeah, it looks like all the, all the keywords I was concerned about are all covered in the glossary, which is great. You've also then got a picture of each of your boards and um, because you've got two double-sided boards. Um, it can be quite, you know, in competitive underworlds, you have to really think about which um, which board you want to take um, because they have different starting hexes and stuff. There's um, different reasons for taking, taking each one. I just personally take the one that looks the coolest, but I'm sure if I start playing a bit more competitively, I'll, uh, I'll start being a bit more picky and choosy about my boards. And then what is handy is at the back, on the back page of the rule book, <clears throat> it's got like a cheat sheet, all your combat sequence, your turn sequence, your activation options, and your round sequence. So a nice, at a glance, how to play the game um, and the steps as you and your opponent take turns activating your fighters. So that's quite comprehensive. I like that. Um, and I also like the battle lore and stuff in there as well. I'm looking forward to giving that a bit of a closer read for the for the review over on spreesandbrews.com, of which the link will be in the description below. Um, also in that review, you'll find better photos of all the decks and all the cards and the character cards and stuff as well. So make sure you check that out. Now I'm gonna take a quick pause because I'm gonna open the cards next and we're gonna check those out. So in this little pack, we've got all our cards. So we've got the Rhyme Worms Bite Rivals deck which is usable by any warband. We have what looks like to be the Brethren of the Bolt Rivals deck. The Hungering Parasite Rivals deck, which again is um, another one that can be used by any warband. And we've got the Skinner Kin as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the two warbands and we're gonna go through each of the cards so you can see what their decks are like. I want to start with the Skinnerkin. So let's check these out. So we've got the Skinnerkin Rivals deck. We've got the Fighters first. This is your leader. Got four health was more, more than I expected. The Ladies Cleaver. After the turn success step, game one, a haunched counter. Fillet, reaction. After this fight is successful, range one action. Gain a, ha a haunch counter. And once you've got three of them, you inspire. So you power up. I like that prime cut. That's really cool. These are like the chefs of the flesh eater courts, I guess. Young Master Creech. 
So yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a lopping cleaver. Again, once you've got three haunches, he inspires. Does a bit more damage. Does he lose a piece of health? No. Started with three. Uh, Flensmaster Pudrig. So he, um, Flay, he gains a haunched counter when an adjacent enemy fighter is taken out of action. A bit harder to, to do. Cedric the Chain. He's pretty cool. Got a couple of different attack actions. When he inspires a power up a bit as well. And the Khan Skier is more like your proper flying vampire. Yeah, he's cool. Doesn't do as much damage as I expected. Um, but he is pretty quick. Five hexes is quick. Uh, let's quickly go through the um, the rest of the cards. So we've got our objective cards. I always find Jewel to be quite um, challenging. That's not too bad of a one though. Gains you a point of glory. Back to the kitchens. Last minute order. <laughs> I like the name of these. They're all very like cooking inspired. Um, they're all jewels so far, which is interesting. One for you, one for me. Yeah, the name of these cards are ace. But they are absolutely all jewel. Here we go. So we've got some normal objective cards here. That's um, a little bit harder to do though. Sing while you work. Yeah, another dual objective. Slaughterhouse. That could be quite an easy one to get, especially if you're facing a more elite warband. Have more horned counters than there are surviving enemy fighters. Tenderize the meat. Get another jewel. And the main course. <coughs> Sun. So we're moving on to our ploys now. Get out of my loader. Greedy, greedy. Precise fillet. Season the meat. Oh, these are heal as well. That makes sense. The King Hungers. Unfit for a king. Pick one. Discard four haunch counters if you do gain two spent glory points. That's cool. Or discard two and gain one. That's nice. Some upgrades. Butcher's strength. Cars hands. Gruesome gourmand. So yeah, the the theme of kitchen and chefs is absolutely throughout this deck, which is really fun latching on. So that looks like a really fun deck. I mean, the objectives, um, uh, for the most part, are all dual cards, which are a little bit harder to achieve than sort of just a, a simple objective. But compared to, to some dual cards I've seen, that they didn't seem too bad at first glance. Like I said, there'll be some better pictures over on the, the website. Um, so make sure you do check out that link in the description. But we're now going to move on to the second Warband's Rivals deck, um, which is the Brethren of the Bolt. So now we're on to the Brethren of the Bolt. Sorry, I need to get that um, focused in. So let's check out these ones. Oh, so, oh, what's this? Plot. When using the Brethren of the Bolt, show this card to your opponent. Crackling with faith. Each friendly fighter from this warband begins the game inspired. 
Drawing the friendly fighter's action on their fighter card, other than siphoning the attack action, when first determine the distance between the attacker and the target, subtract one from the total distance for each hat counted that contains a friendly fighter. I think, yeah, so I think you can bounce, like, your attack off um, friendly fighters there, uh, if I'm working that out correctly. So that's cool. Cards that make up the rival's deck. So they start the game inspired, it said. So let's have a look at the inspired side first. So in the inspire step in this turn in which this fighter made one was uninspire. Right, I see. So he starts inspired, like charged up. And then when you make the attack, you become uninspired. And then if you support an attack, an attacker adjacent to the target, you inspire again. Okay. That's an interesting mechanic. Um, yeah, it might take a little bit of getting used to that one. Not seen anything like that before. That's pretty cool. I do like interesting mechanics on these cards. Um, Friar Galvic. So again, these are going to start inspired and then become inspired when they attack. Electrostatic Discharge. A Warband that starts inspired. That's cool. Acolyte Arcus. Scorch Jacob. Yes, yeah, um, very cool. Quite like that. Right, we're gonna look at some of uh, the other cards now. So again, dual objective. I wonder if this is gonna be a running theme. Um, this has been quite popular. These dual cards. This one is in those close immediate after activation step if two or more enemy fighters are staggered. Okay. Bringer of the Dawn. Hybrid. Apologies if this keeps going in and out of focus. I'm not sure if it's because of the light. Kind of missing the cool um, kitchen f named cards. <laughs> these guys, I think the lore for these guys are pretty cool. I'm pretty sure they, um, they've they all at some point been struck by lightning, which has been caused by sort of Stormcast returning to Azir uh, once he'd been slain, which is pretty cool. Unwavering beacons. Again, quite a, a balanced deck so far. Moving on to the ploys. A lot of sort of playing on the lightning theme here. Bolt from the blue. Oh, that's cool. So that's going to help you inspire, re inspire. Yeah, I like that. Final Spark. That's also very cool. Only him. A lot of attack minded cards in this deck. And lots of ways to re inspire your fighters. Unleashing his fury. What's that say? This fight cannot be. This fighter cannot be uninspired. That's a very good upgrade. Like he's got a backpack of electric energy. Damage machinery. And then we've just got the final few cards here. Again, I'm looking at these for the first time. Um, so this is a true unboxing video. 
so far I quite like the um, Sigma Cyclone. That sounds cool. Oh yeah, that's, that's sweet. And then the artifact is here. A way to heal your fighters. So a very quick glance, that seemed quite fun. Um, seemed to be quite weighing heavily on attacks and um, sort of attack actions and also re-inspiring your fighters, which is good. Sort of heal card at the end there as well, which is pretty tasty. Um, so quite interesting deck. I'll, I'm going to obviously sit down and take a close look at all these decks before writing out the review. Um, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but there will be better pictures of all these cards over on spruceandbruce.com. So do make sure you check out that link. Right, we're going to move on to the two Rivals decks now, um, which we're going to very quickly flick through. Okay, so these uh, next two decks are usable by any Warband, so you can use them with um, the, the Skinner Kin, the Brethren of the Bolt, or any of your older Warbands, um, any of them at all, going back to sort of um, the Ard Boys from the original sort of releases of Underworld to Zondara's Gravebreakers who have recently come out. So we're going to have a very quick flick through these. Um, there will be some there will be photos of every card over on the website um when using cards on the hungry parasite deck show this card to your opponent your bane of heroes upgrade do not spend any glory points when giving the bane of heroes upgrade to a fighter when a fighter has one or more bane of heroes upgrades it's taken out of action break those upgrades hmm Okay. Interesting mechanic. Driven by the curse. So it's like the, the Bane of Heroes is like a card you kind of want, but also has its, uh, has its downfalls. Hmm. Does really play on this Bane of Heroes uh, mechanic. I think this one's going to take a bit more reading to fully get. Um, but obviously, you know, we're checking out the cards for the first time here. Careful aim. This fighter cannot be dealt damage by a Bane of Heroes upgrade. Yeah, this one's going to take a little bit of reading um, to fully sort of get the deck. Interesting. Yeah, that's um, going to be a bit of an interesting one to check out. I'm looking forward to reading those ones a bit closer. We do have one more. Rival step just to quickly go through, and that's the Rhyme Worms Bite. So let's just check these this one out. So the cards are in the deck. Blood Soak Dice. So these objectives seem a bit more straightforward. Yeah, these are sort of a play on some of the sort of objectives I remember. Some of the original ones. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, these uh, objectives seem a lot more straightforward than the previous deck. Um, there's no particular mechanic so far that I can see. Quite a few cards that force um, your opponent to stagger. 
from what I can see so far. Some movement, quite a few movement and sort of pushing your enemy around. Again, quite an interesting deck that I need to really sit down and read a bit more to perhaps, perhaps fully get to grips with. That's cool, boots of wooding. I always like the artwork on these cards. They're really, really high quality. I love the little quotes as well that they have on there. So yeah, these play a lot on the domain sort of cards. So again, quite an interesting deck. Um, that I'll have to sort of sit down and read a bit more of to fully get, um, get to grips with. Four very different decks between the two Warband specific ones and the two general Rivals War um, decks. Um, so yeah, I'll have to sit down and properly go through those to, to fully understand them. Uh, before we finish off this review, we do have this to just quickly unbox. So we'll do that next. So within the white card, we've got our boards. So let's just take this one, fold it out. I really like the sort of vibrancy of the art on the boards as well. Remember some of the old um, Shattered City ones were quite dark. These are quite clear where your hexes are uh, and they're very interesting looking boards. That's the first one. We've then got a sheet of tokens, again, quite vibrant. Plenty of wound and glory counters as well as your objectives. Again, apologies if that's not focusing very well. And they're double sided as well. And you get two sheets of those. which is very cool, and some guard tokens and glory tokens and things. And then we've got the last board. So there's one side, and there's the other one. In fact, I don't think we looked at the back of oh, this one, so let's do that. So that's one side, and that's the other side. So very cool, that is Wintermore unboxed. So um, yeah, four very different sets of cards. Um, the Warbands in themselves, I mean, this is strictly based on a, a quick first impression because you know we've just gone through this contents together. But the Skinnerkins seem to be the site that you the two Warbands maybe to get to grips with initially. Not to say that the Brother and the Bolt are gonna be difficult to play, uh, I will need a closer look at their cards, but I think if you need to Underworld, you should be okay with, with either Warband. I do like how much they've crammed into the rulebook now. It seems a lot more <clears throat> a lot more detailed than previous ones I've um, unboxed and reviewed, um, which I really, really like. And we've got four very different decks, very different play styles between the two Warbands and the two Rivals decks. Um, that you can use of any warband. Um, so yeah, a great style set. Again, not 100%, well, not keen on the, the, the six form cycle, but it is what it is. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what warbands they release for Wintermore, because we'll get a couple of those before we get another starter box. Um, but yeah, a great, a great starter set, some great models, some great cards. Um, I'm looking forward to sitting down with a a brew or two and going through the cards in a bit more detail. Um, so do make sure you check out that review in the link um, in the description below. Even if you just want to check out those cards at your own leisure, I'll include photos within the article. Um, but yeah, that brings this um, unboxing to a close. Our thanks to Games Workshop for sending us Wintermore to unbox and review for you guys. Um, and we've got loads of great content coming soon as well. Um, if you haven't already, if you're a Warhammer Underworlds fan, I have recently done the Zondara's Gravebreakers unboxing. And also, uh, within that same video, I've checked out the Rhyme Locked Relics Rivals deck. Uh, and in a separate video, I also checked out the, um, the the Mirrored City box, the Rivals of the Mirrored City, which brought back, brought back sorry, for the older Warbands. So make sure you check that out. But that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me. Well, I'll be back in another video very soon. Happy hobbying.